It's just a different way of life, though. Yeah, you have to make your own amusement, I suppose. There was no else to do, Catherine, you know, when you mm -hmm. think of it, there was no television. And... Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it would be the only hobby people had once upon a time, you know, go to one another's houses and have a bit crack and a bit music, you know. There used to be a fiddle except in the cupboard beside the fireplace at Elsnion and sometimes Gary Dutton. If you could, could play, <laughs> give a tune, they can Jack Dunn, the record he used to make. Old Davy Rogers says, oh man, he says, when he got a hand of your fiddle, he says, I did a different sound altogether. That's one thing, it has changed, Catherine, hasn't it? No. It's not a speed. I mean, it's very clever to be able to play fast. That, uh, that, that was timing, you see. I mean, there's a limit to how fast your feet can mm -hmm. go. Tied round just like a lemon bag on his back. And then he was away. And he'd go for miles and miles. got loads of these cassettes at home and it's strange that although at the time it was the music it was the tunes that were important L listening to them now my favorite bits are the little bits every now and again in between the tunes I can hear my kind of 13 year old voice going so where did you learn that tune from then Dick and he goes from some blind fiddlers over in Carlisle and I say oh Blind fiddle players, were they all blind? Aye. Ooh, were they all related? I was never so bloody cheeky as to ask. And there's all, there's all this sort of stuff on the cassettes, it's brilliant. But, um, and I think that might have been kind of where this, the idea for this show kind of started, although I didn't know it at the time, because in the intervening 20 odd years, I've been and recorded various different musicians, the traditional musicians up in North Northumberland, and recorded them playing tunes, but also talking about where they learnt the tunes from and what life was like, you know, just all sorts of things. You see, if you hear a tune with a half note and you kind of produce them, then what do you do? You change it sometimes. And other times, you change it, but then you kind of get back. You just have to wink and gan by. But I do like a tune with something kind of difficult, like it gives you great satisfaction when you overcome it. sort of things that they were listening to when they were growing up and so it started us off thinking what we used to listen to when we were all growing up and it's kind of obvious really but um, it became apparent to us that when you're very little you don't actually have very much say in what music you listen to because it tends to be your parents um, whatever they listen to is what you listen to and I was brought up listening to border ballads and I don't know if any of you are familiar with border ballads, but they're long <laughs> and they're bloodthirsty.
what I did do one night though. I biked 27 mile to a dance and I biked 27 mile home again. Right the way through Ford in a way long. Oh, we had a band like, and there was about seven fiddlers, and they were all fairly good, like, apart from me, like. And there was Peter, Peter was turning deaf, and I used to tune his fiddle for him. But oh, there was some canny fiddlers. We used to walk three, six miles, six miles to the dance hall, and the fellas on the other side, they would walk more, maybe, eight, ten miles, and they would walk maybe to this new hall, this new hall at Windy Half, built by Mr. Askew Robertson. Now to Alwinton we all step out to see the shepherd show, and into Foreman's for a glass, they'll with their cronies go. They'll argue and they'll sing and shout, but fight, God bless you know, that's the canny shepherd laddies of the last time. Oh, the shepherds of the coconut, oh, the Alwyn and the reed, the Bormans and the Bremish, they're all the same breed. With their collie dogs in the and the stick on heat, that's the canny shepherd laddies of the hill. Well, he said no word about their wives, but surely there's no need, cause in every house that I've been in, I'm sure they are the heels. <laughs> That's why I didn't sing it. And I'm sure you'll all agree with me that it takes good wives to breed. The canny shepherd laddies of the hill. Come on. Oh, the shepherds of the coconut, oh, they are one and the reed. The Bowmans and the Greenish, they're all of the same breed. With their collie dogs in them and the stick on heat. Well, I've had two or three jobs in my time. I liked sheep when I was a youth, so I worked on the farm for a while. But I wasn't content with that. I saw the farmer making our much money, and me not plenty. Then later, I started off for myself, catching rabbits. And after that, and that was a good half year's work, I went back on with the sheep and worked the other half year. Then the mix of maturities came about in 1955 or something, and I weighed the subject up again. And I knew the Sophia well at Annick. And I asked him if he had a job. And he said, Aye, I might can wangle you would. So he did. I did all the road signs. Put them up. Took them down. And playing at the dances helped. So you got paid then? Aye, handsome. We got seven and sixpence on a Saturday night. And ten shillings on a Friday night. And that was good. Now that was a real help, you know. Well, I can tell you just exactly where I learned this tune. It was at Roston, at the harvest supper. Uncle Toady played the fiddle, and Billy played the box. And we laughed and drank and sang like there's no war on. I have shepherded these hills, I've been a rabbit catcher. And I've changed every road sign from Annick down to Cresta. I've always loved to play and to watch the people dance. Why in me if the cycle 30 miles to get the chance? Now me daddy was in Flanders fighting with the fusiliers. Me and mum were at the cottage till the telegram appeared. They gave us one week's notice, there was little time for tears. Uncle Dodie then he took us in at Roston. I have shepherded these hills, I've been a rabbit catcher. And I've changed every road sign from Annick down to Cresta. I've always loved to play and to watch the people dance. Why in me hit the cycle 30 miles to get the chance? Trying to get back where they belonged. And, you know, with the fleece on them, and in lamb, 
They were just sinking. They were just getting dragged away with the ice. Horrible, that. We didn't have a postman and ma'am she used to buy our flour in 10 stone bags and she was scraping the last of it out of the flour bin when word came through that the road was open a windy half which meant that we could get groceries i mean we shopped for months ahead of course there was the pig to kill and his bacon was hanging up on the ceiling and the hens lived in the hen loft in the byre so they were warm and they were laying so that was another thing we had You'll have had Catherine would be not having a day at the march, the market, and going to the pub, because it was always worth going to the pub, because they were good nights, them days when the pub used to be like a rockin', you know, on a mark day, whether the trade was good or bad, you don't go to many pubs nowadays, when the place is rocking. Plenty people laughing, plenty people chatting, six deep at the bar. You forget how good them days would be. You went to the pub, and there was like such a buzz about the place. The atmosphere. 
I suppose the breathalyzer may be stopped at a bit. But then you've got these big companies that took over a lot of pubs, and you just ended up with a manager in the pub. Um, and there's, there's one pub in particular that I always kind of think about, and it's the Grey Bull in the village of Wark, and I've had some great times in there, just loads of great nights where there's been music and singing and just general carousing, it's been fantastic. And, um, and there's all sorts of music goes on in there as well, you know, you'd have a session but it's not just traditional stuff. I mean, you will get maybe a tune or a song that's specific to that particular village or, you know, that valley. Things like um, Sweet Hesley Side or the Walksburn Waltz, tunes like that. Your heart cheating heart will tell on you When tears come down like falling that long some of those cockerels they wear themselves out Football team. <laughs> he is a man of great imagination, Barty Potts, but um, it had to be called Walk Football Team and it had to be fast and flashy to suit their style of play. <laughs> we'll play you another one, a hornpipe just before it as well. It's a hornpipe called the Grey Bull Hornpipe. And it's a tune that I wrote when the pub was modernised. And uh, I can, actually, I could hear the indrawn breath there. It's like you're all thinking, oh, no, they've ruined it. And, and it, you do tend to think, you know, when pubs get modernised, it's going to be all formica and stuff comes in and all the original features go out. But um, it wasn't quite like that with the grey ball. <laughs> Thank you. 
been there when the normal sheep was there. Now, they think they can take the sheep off these places and fence places off and that the flowers will grow. Well, they don't. They get suffocated by the longer grass and then they kind of get up through. Plus, where the sheep graze in patches and they graze it down, then they leave the sheep muck and you get all the little insects and the wild birds. So they defeat the object, I would think, with all the fence and places off. Everything's got to have a place. It takes all things for to keep it just going. Where they fence these areas off, these bogs and everything, where the next minute there's no muck on them and they're swamped by the longer grass. to all the deserted farmhouses and they were all kind of blocked off and you know there was boards over them and danger keep out private property all this sort of thing and if you know me dad you would know that that a keep out sign is like a, a red rag to a bull with him <laughs> but, um, so he was kind of ripping the boards off and prizing them apart and we would be kind of squeezing in and getting into the houses and and it, it was just very strange being in these empty rooms. And I had my tin whistle in the car and Dad asked me to go and get it and asked me to play a tune in each of the, each of the houses that we went into because it would, be, it would be the last music that was ever played within those walls. <laughs> My dad was not happy at the idea of this big lake at all. And, um, and his reason for it was that it was going to completely ruin the fishing. Because you know what it's like when, you've, when you know a river really well and you've grown up there and you know how it's going to be. You know, you can look out the window and you know what the weather is and you know how much rain there's been over the last couple of weeks or so. And you can predict what the river's going to be like and whether it's going to be a perfect day for fishing or not. And then suddenly, somebody goes and plonks this reservoir down in the middle of the, your rivers. And, you know, these rivers that until then had been controlled by nature are suddenly controlled by a man at the Kielder Dam. But the sound of your waters fast scouring the stones it was alien to soldiers from France and from Bonn, but a while northern rivers in far away time. Home was Reedsdale and Liddesdale and Bonnie North Tyne. And when the high hawk from his gap in the sky comes tumbling to earth with 
his feathers awry And the red robin berry turns black as the snow With the cold winds about me To you I will go This is my land Even though it wasn't In terms of ownership it wasn't But it was like this is where I'm from. You know, I'd be out on a summer's night and I'd be throwing the ball with our Margaret and I'd hear the peewits and things and those times when you just lie in the long grass and you look up and you can see the clouds moving quickly. All the things that you remember and all the tunes that you've heard or played, all the songs that you've sung or listened to, all the stories that people have told you, all of those things, they kind of... They become, they go towards making you what you are and they live on through you. We played you a lot of tunes tonight that were written by my friend Willie Taylor. And Willie died about 10 years ago. But when I play a Willie Taylor tune, he's still there. I can hear him, I can hear him playing. Because I learnt those tunes from him and he's there in my playing. And you can hear him. You might not have realised it, but when I was playing those tunes, you weren't just hearing me, you were hearing Willie Taylor. And so it goes on. to you now. Oh. <laughs> My dad's going to have the last word. He does like it. Well, I'd like to finish off with a song from the North Tyne. It's called The Company Makes the Feast. There's a chorus in it as well. We'll not have a practice. We'll just go straight into it. Friends, we all know well And every act is noted Beast to least, hard times here are yesterdays. The company makes the feast. We'll crack about the lamin, the struggle to win hay, keel the water and the forest. The changes here today, like collie dogs, we're running. There isn't time to blow. Now everything's up tempo Where once we took it slow For the company makes the feast me laugh And music weaves a spell Song and story, pints and fiddle Friends we all know well My dad was a very good dancer He used to really enjoy it Remember the lances They used to swing everybody right up high in the and it was just amazing for a young kid to be there, just seeing all these people who normally go around sort of quite old and sensible and then 
everything and then you see them being swung off their feet and their feet flying around in the air.